So I'm kind of strange being here in Detroit, your neighborhood really, and uh, having you back. But um, everyone that I talk to um, and, and been telling them, like, listen, I'm going to go to Detroit. Why? Well, you know, I'm just going to meet someone. I probably am. They ask themselves, why do you really need to come back? Why? You achieved everything in your life. You are really like a myth. You're a legend. What is it that brought you actually back on the scene? I'm comfortable here. I just... I this is home. Why not? You know what I mean? No, I really am pretty much a big deal, but... <laughs> Did you um, intend just to come back now with, like, already, like, two uh, records announced, Relapse 1 and 2, what actually pushed you to do so? Because you could really, like, easily chill and like, just have a good time. So why giving yourself all that stress with a declining industry like the music industry? I just love doing it. I mean, you know, I, I kind of found a way to have fun with rap again. Once me and Dre got on a roll with these, with these records, we didn't really plan to do two records. It just kind of came out that way. There was so much material that it was like, okay, well, what are we gonna do with it? All right, well, let's set up each album and kind of structure it to, to, to kind of be a part one and a part two, kind of be a continuation. So the first set of songs is kind of like what, I guess what I would want people to hear first, obviously, but, and then, you know, part two, like, it, it's kind of a continuation of the last one. Well, I heard that you kind of produced around, like, 300 tracks. That's what people believe that you could have done, like, lately, because you've been almost, like, working every day and producing and producing. Um, was it really a, a difficult thing just to really pick those right tracks for these records, for one and two? The only thing that I produced on Relapse, um, the first record, was a, a song called Beautiful. Mm. That's the only thing that I used from that batch. I mean, I, I think I recorded for probably three, four years straight, just recorded songs. A lot of that material was, all, pretty much most of that material was pretty much scrapped. Once me and Dre got on a roll, like around, I think, June, July of last year, we just kept going and we started from, from scratch, basically. So Dre produced all of this first record with just, uh, except for one track. Mm. And I'm not sure how it's going to go for the, you know, there's records that I've produced also that I'm not sure are going to be on part two yet. Like, we basically, we went through, we, we selected, like, what we want to be on the first record, and we haven't done that exactly with part two. Like, we, we, we kind of got, got a pretty good idea, but we're not 100% sure yet. So there might be more stuff that I produced on the second record, we don't know. And please tell us something about the title of Relapse, because Relapse really is not a positive thing. But for you, as a student your record, it should be something positive. Tell us something about Relapse. Relapse wasn't a positive thing for me. You know, the whole rehab experience, obviously. Went to rehab, came out of rehab, still didn't really have it figured out. And, you know, just the struggles with, like, I guess coming to terms that I'm an addict. First of all, with that whole thing, and then the way that the record felt, like, as I started recording it, and, like, you know, once me and Dre got going, the way the record was feeling was kind of like, almost like relapsing back to, you know, the first two records, mm -hmm. the Slim Shady LP, the Marshall Mathers LP. It's kind of what it started feeling like, so hence the title. Judging by the cover of uh, Relapse One, having your face on the, uh, displayed on a pile of like pills, um, how it much looks of it? Delicious, don't it? Uh, it I think I, I believe freaking delicious. I believe some people might be kind of like confused that it it's really an, looks. It's delicious. a scratch and sniff cover, and it's also edible. So, when was the, actually this turning point where you decided, okay, I, I need to stop it? Is it? Did you have like uh, friends who told you that, or did you really feel for yourself? Because as far as I know, it, I mean, I got some history of that too. It, it's really important that for yourself, you understand that it's kind of uh, something that you should stop. I mean. Have you never been kind of afraid of dying of it? Because like so many other yeah, artists definitely. did. Definitely. I mean, there's, there's the, like, you know, yeah, my friends told me to stop. Yeah, you know, like, friends, family, everybody wanted me to stop. And when I went into rehab the first time, was because everyone else wanted me to stop. I didn't necessarily really, I didn't want to stop. You know, I, I knew, like, like, at least in the back of my mind, like, okay, everybody wants me to get clean. Let me go see if I can do this. Mm. You know, and ended up staying in rehab. I think that lasted like two weeks. And I came out of rehab and I started taking pills again, like probably within that week. Mm. I mean, I had to come to a personal realization like, you know, it, didn't ma it doesn't matter what my friends or anyone around me is saying. It, you know, it's got to come from inside you.
You know what I mean? You have to make that decision. You can't get clean until you're ready to get clean. You can't get clean for anybody else. You can't get sober because other people want you to. But what was it? What was the turning point when you decided, okay, for yourself, okay, that's it. I go to rehab, I'm fine. Others have their Well, right. I mean, there was, I basically, I got to, I got to an age and I also got to a level of, you know, the shit that I was actually taking, the, the amount that I was consuming, mm -hmm. where I was just like, if I don't stop, this is gonna kill me. I went to some friends and just said, look, I got a problem with this. I don't want to be judged. I don't want you to think I'm a bad person. But it's, it's not like I surprised anybody when I came to them with it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like everybody pretty much knew what the deal was. It's just, I, I, don't know, I don't know exactly who I thought I was fooling, but you know, when I finally decided like, I want to quit, I want to stop. You know, it was a personal choice for me. Now that you're back on stage, on the, on, on the scene, on the music scene, on the popular scene, um, it, how, how much is it really that you really want to entertain people? Because that's what you're doing, you're really good at it. That's why it's also very tricky just to, to see that someone needs to take drugs because you believe otherwise he wouldn't be good. I mean, I still believe that you're a genius on, on that terms. Um, how far is it really that you really want to entertain? Or is it perhaps another way just to have another addiction or just to have a kind of an, a balance to what you've left now behind with the pills? I love what I do. You know, I mean, I, I eat, sleep, breathe, rap. I mean, that's pretty much what I've done for forever, you know? I think I enjoy making people laugh, you know what I mean? And just and having a good time. Mm -hmm. And like I said, like this time I'm actually having fun with it. Listening closely to 3M, one of the songs on Relapse, to a certain degree I was like, okay, I'm not sure. Is it really only fun or isn't there somehow a sick side of you? Because that track is dope, but at the same time, very sick. Well, thank you. I take pride in my uh, illness. I watch a lot of uh, a lot of serial killer documentaries. I, I mean, I always have, but I kind of just, I guess, learned to apply it in, in you know, into a run. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I mean, it's kind of the way, you know, I guess it's the way I think. Like, you know, it's just a I got a demented warped sense of humor, you know. But it's all, I mean, the, the, the track, a, a lot of the record is like that. It's kind of, mm -hmm. you know, I guess pretty demonic, but... As me. But aren't you kind of afraid of violence? I mean, uh, judging by what you witnessed, like in, in your personal life, friends, who, for example, who died of violence, was that never a point where you kind of thought like, okay, maybe I should like step back a bit, become a little softer on my, on my topics, on my, uh, on my themes? At the end of the day, when I think about it, and I think about if Proof was here right now, this is what he would want me to do, is wild out on everybody again, hmm. you know, and just go back to what made us, which is kind of like the, you know, the, the Dirty Dozen concept that, you know, that he came up with originally was like, we need to rap about the sickest shit that we could possibly think of. Mm. You know what I mean? So I know that if he was here right now, he'd be like, yeah, that's, that's what I want you doing, man. How disrespectful can you really be? Because people are getting used to I it. I can be pretty fucking disrespectful, let but, me tell you. <laughs> but hey, but nowadays, it used to be like, oh my God, Eminem said something about me. Even like the last time, Michael Jackson was more not amused about being mentioned in one of your records. Now you have someone like Kim Kardashian who's like, who takes it as an honor being in your video. So do you feel insulted by that? When you keep beating at something and you keep beating at the same spot, it's going to get numb after a while. So I think people are like probably used to it by now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, that's just, it's just him. Does it bother you? Are you looking out for ways just to go beyond that? Do you think on Relays we will find tracks which are even harder than, than perhaps uh, those, those quotes on We Made You? I think that you might, yeah. yeah. You mentioned D12. What about you as, 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 as a business, really? Uh, shady records, um, pretty much everything is now going to be focused on you. But um, does it somehow influence like, you know, the, the fork going of, of shady records itself? I mean, with all the artists on it, 50, Obi, Stagquo, D12, does it, does it influence, uh, is it gonna have any influence on how like, the, the record will continue? Will you still be into that, that thing or do you simply gonna concentrate on yourself being uh, oh, well, the rapper, <coughs> the producer? I mean, for the moment right now, I mean, you know, it's my record. And then, or, or these two records. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure once I get back into, you know, once things calm down a little bit with, with these two records, then I'll probably be back in the studio, you know, producing and, and doing the same thing. But right now it's like, you know, you gotta prioritize, so. Do you see a growth in, in, in Shady Records? Do you think it's possible just to sign like new artists? Because like a lot of people are not really so happy with what's happening